The Met Gala, also known as the Attention Seekers Oscars. And of course, the name of the game is who can spend the most on the worst looking piece of attire. Some of the highlights include Lupita Nyong'o, dressed here as the Riddler's side chick, Kanye here doing a Downton Abbey cosplay, and of course Beyonce here alongside Jay-Z looking like she's going to a space funeral. But silly dresses aside, 2014 Met Gala would be a very special year for Jay and Bay because this was the famous year that Beyonce's sister Solange decided to steal the show with an impromptu bout of amateur elevator boxing. Ladies, gentlemen, and any other pronouns introduced since 2014, welcome to an explosive night of HBO Elevator Boxing. Forget the rumble in the jungle, it's gonna be the fist in the lift, blast in the shaft, crouching sister hidden buttons. Grab the popcorn, pour yourself a large lemonade, and let's get ready to rumble! Tonight's venue for this bout is the Standard Hotel in New York City, specifically the after party for the 2014 Met Gala. In the mirrored corner, coming out of the Marcy Projects, fighting in the middleweight division, wearing the white tuxedo with the dusty shoe stain, with an impressive record of 13 number one albums, numerous extramarital affairs, and one older brother shot when he was 12. It's the kid presentable of the hip hop world, Jay-Z. And in the corner closest to the buttons, wearing the Macy's outlet few Corinne's dress, fighting in the featherweight division with zero hit records, zero classic albums, and one claim to fame, it's Beyonce's sister. Oh, I've just got reports she does have her own name. It's Solange! We've got Solange entering the lift first, followed by Jay-Z, and it looks like an argument's already going on. She's raising her handbag in a rage, pushing him away, and she's not liking this. Oh, wow! Oh, coming in with two big right hands, holding her handbag. The handbag's gone, and oh my god, two explosive front kicks! We were not expecting her to come out so hot. The security are holding her back now. Oh my, another kick! Another kick! She's going in! She is going in. Jay-Z's trying to defuse the situation. Even Beyonce's stepping in now, trying to have words, but it looks like she is going absolutely wild. She is going wild. She looks like maybe she's even spitting towards Jay-Z. This is out of control. This is out of... She's, oh, another lunge! And he's caught the foot! He's caught the leg! He is push, he's pushing her back and now Beyonce has stepped in and it looks like it could be a technical knockout on stoppage basis. Beyonce has stepped in and tried to control her out of control sister who is still spitting and lunging towards Jay-Z like a rabid, talentless dog. Oh my lord. Now, moments after this famous incident, Jay, Bay, and Solange, aka Beyonce if she went to a pretentious art school, were photographed leaving the venue. Now, it took a few days from the fight for the elevator footage to actually leak. And after it did, this photograph gained a lot of prominence, particularly Beyonce's face for having the kind of smirk that seems to suggest she just had her boyfriend beaten up by the club bouncer. Reportedly, at the time, they got off the elevator and left the venue as if nothing had happened. Though notably, the Knowles sisters went off in one car while Jay-Z left the venue alone in another. And in the days that followed, the elevator beatdown, the Knoll sisters acted as if nothing had happened, going on to take a quick trip to Costa Rica where they appeared at the secret wedding for Kelly Rowland. They came back and both Beyonce and Jay-Z appeared together courtside at a Brooklyn Nets game five days after the fight had gone down. After that, they enjoyed a nice Mother's Day with Blue Ivy. But little did they know that the day after that, shit was about to kick the fan. Reportedly, a standard hotel security guard had actually sold a recording of the tape to TMZ for a whopping $250,000. And apparently, he'd spent the days following the fight shopping around that tape to the highest bidder. And that security guard was duly fired when it emerged what he'd done. Worth it! Of course, once that tape leaked, the photograph of Beyonce with the shit-eating grin became an infamous meme on Twitter, spawning the hashtag WhatJaySaidToSolange. Some of my favorite entries include, sorry, this elevator's for artists only. Beyonce buys 65,000 copies of your album every time they drop just to make you think you have fans. And of course the classic, Blue Ivy makes more money than you. But jokes aside, many people started to speculate on exactly why Jay-Z had had such a hard kick night, with the most credible rumor being that Jay-Z had in fact cheated on Beyonce. However, it is worth mentioning that a lot of people did buy into a rumor that Beyonce and Jay-Z had actually orchestrated this whole thing as a farce to generate publicity. And this rumor was further spread by Beyonce's estranged father in a radio interview not long after the tape became public. So do you think that the argument when Solange was hitting Jay-Z in the elevator, do you think that was all like they knew it was being recorded and they wanted it to get out there? All I know is the Jedi mind trick. Everybody's talking about it, ticket sales went up, Solange album sales went up 200%. 
Mm. Then again, I'm not necessarily sure that I would trust the guy that was fired and ejected from Beyonce's inner circle after accusations emerged that he'd been stealing from her. The idea of this story also being fake was given some credence by a former publicist of Rihanna who was later interviewed in the Daily Mail and fessed up to having created a rumor that Jay-Z was having an affair with Rihanna. Fake news completely concocted by him to get her additional clout at the early stages of her career in 2005. Suspicions were raised even further considering the fact that only days after the elevator tape leaked, Jay-Z and Beyonce launched the official trailer for their On The Run tour, a seemingly overproduced trailer that showed a bunch of confusing fictional scenes for a film that was apparently coming out never. And to be fair, that coincidental timing does make things look a little bit suspect. Hey, maybe if I'd have had my girlfriend kick my head in in a lift a few days before I dropped my album Viper the Piper, it wouldn't have flopped so damn hard. Look, while I can't strictly disprove the theory that this entire thing was a marketing ploy, I personally feel like it's pretty unlikely. I mean, the way that Jay and Bay swan around all holier than thou like their turds don't stink makes me think that they probably didn't like the ratchet publicity that this incident afforded them. I personally don't think that Jay-Z sees himself as the kind of business titan that gets a good kicking from his sister-in-law in an elevator. That's not a good look down the golf club, is it? Then again, I'd probably wager that WeWork's IPO would have got off to a much better start had we seen Adam Newman had his head caved in like that scene in Drive just a couple of days before listing. All publicity is good publicity, baby. Anyway, as hungry for attention as Beyonce is, and considering the fact that she was able to spin this drama into a very successful album a few years later, I'd still say that she had enough going on in her career not to have to stoop to these kind of low-level shenanigans, staging the elevator fight for clap. And at the very least, if you were gonna stage this whole thing, at least shoot that shit on a better camera. I mean, goddamn, $250,000 for this piece of shit tape? They were gonna fake it, at least get Hype Williams in to shoot it like a kung fu action flick. So assuming this was all real, the Carter Knowles family attempted to get a handle on the situation and released the following statement on May the 15th, 2014. As a result of the public release of the elevator security footage from Monday, May the 5th, there has been a great deal of speculation about what triggered the unfortunate incident. But the most important thing is that our family has worked through it. Jay and Solange each assume their responsibility for what has occurred. They both acknowledge their role in this private matter that has played out in the public. They both have apologized to each other and we have moved forward as a united family. The reports of Solange being intoxicated or displaying erratic behavior throughout the evening are simply false. At the end of the day, families have problems and we're no different. We love each other and above all, we are family. We've put this behind us and we hope everybody else will do the same. Hmm, whole lot of talk, not a lot of answers. So let's take a deep dive into exactly why Solange decided to turn Jay-Z into an elevator punching bag. Now at the time, rumors of Jay-Z's infidelity were the most credible explanation, and those rumors spread as quickly as a post omelette fart in an unventilated lift. Initial reports came out that that fight had followed Jay-Z flirting with a woman named Rachel Roy at the Met Gala that night. Rachel Roy is actually a well-known stylist, and interestingly, is actually the ex-wife of Jay-Z's former business partner and current most bitter man in hip-hop, Dame Dash. Look, I know it's easy to shit on Dame Dash, but you can't knock the business credentials of a bald man that convinced Adam22 to give him $500 for a haircut. His haircut? Like, he literally does not have a hair on his head. That sounds like a pretty expensive uh, haircut, considering all he really needs is a bick. I could have done it for free. Apparently, some flirting between Rachel and Jay-Z took place at the initial event, and tensions rose at the dreadfully titled Boom Boom Room, where the after-party was taking place, and apparently Rachel and Jay's flirting continued. Apparently, Beyonce approached Roy to tell her that the flirting was disrespectful and that Beyonce wanted Roy out of their lives for good, perhaps suggesting that there was something more serious or long-term going on than just some simple flirting. Apparently, Solange came over, definitely not drunk, 100% not drunk, as the Carters have made very clear, not drunk. So sober Solange decided to come and get involved in the confrontation between Beyonce and Rachel Roy, back in her brethren like a female Harlem Spartan. And then at this point, Jay-Z stepped in and apparently said something disrespectful to both of the Knoll sisters. This apparently was the final straw, and the moment that they got in the lift, Solange decided to turn that into the real boom boom room, letting the roundhouse kicks rip on Jay-Z, whilst Beyonce pretty much just stood there and let it happen. Now, full disclosure, we don't necessarily know if any of this narrative is absolutely true, and a lot of this information was reported by digital shitrag E! Entertainment News. But then again, Rachel Roy's ex, Dame Dash, did actually give some credibility to this side of the story. The day after the elevator fight tape actually leaked, Dame shared a picture of Solange alongside the caption, I'm actually impressed with her independent spirit, she seems like a fighter. And as the days went by, the gossip rags just kept getting more ammunition for this narrative. Solange actually deleted all but one of her pictures with Beyonce from her Instagram account. And as the months went by, step by step, a drip by a drip, new info on each person's side of the story story begun to emerge. 
So a few months after her TKO win over Jay-Z, Solange got herself a front cover story in Lucky magazine. I'm totally sure off the back of her own merits and talent. She appeared on the front cover of the magazine looking like a 49 cent store Beyonce, but she didn't actually have any new information to offer about the incident beyond what was already shared in their joint statement. Simply saying, what's important is that my family and I are all good. What we had to say collectively was in the statement that we put out and we all feel at peace with that. Damn, I hope Lucky magazine got a fucking refund for that cover story. Ain't no one trying to hear about Solange's singing career. All people want to hear about in that interview is when her next bout is going to be. And I personally would like to see her fight Nas in a phone booth. But at the very least, some extra tidbits of information did come out when their father, Matthew Knowles, decided to start running his mouth publicly again. Matthew Knowles crawled out of the woodwork going on a little press run, assumingly because he had some rent to pay, and said that he wasn't necessarily surprised that Solange had given Jay-Z a booting. If you know Solange, that's Solange. That's Solange. You just never know what you're going to get. Firecracker. Don't know where she get that from. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, you know, I, then Beyonce would be in the corner, quiet, just kind of like, when y'all finish, let me know. Uh. <laughs> Damn, bitch was kicking since the womb. And subsequently, BuzzFeed dug up Solange's long history of her starting various beefs, painting her as a talentless Azealia Banks with a famous sister. These raucous beefs included accusing Katy Perry of making kitty porn, dissing Miley Cyrus for being a culture vulture and playing black, yeesh and Fox 5 News, who hilariously got back at her with some post-interview roasting. She was promoting her new album, whatever it's called, nobody cares, and uh, it's gonna be in stores, not that any of you care. And while Solange eventually did transcend her perceived lack of musical talent, releasing the acclaimed 2016 album, A Seat at the Table, it was Beyonce who explosively addressed the whole cheating angle in her 2016 album, Lemonade, that released a few months earlier. Beyonce's Lemonade was aptly titled after the old saying, if life gives you lemons, make lemonades, and if your husband cheats, on you, cash in some free clout tokens and make a classic album. Hey, you can't blame Beyonce for cashing in on this elevator incident. I mean, at this point, Beyonce is literally more of a business than an artist. Less of a human and more of a magic ATM that turns attention from basic bitches aged 11 to 45 into cash money, baby. Now, I've got to admit, I generally don't enjoy any songs that can't be used as background music in the bando. However, in anticipation of this story, I did watch and listen to the entire Lemonade project from start to finish, and I've got to say, it slaps harder than Diddy at the exit of Club Live. Fair play to Beyonce, it's a banger. Seemingly, the first half of the album is really calling out Jay-Z for his infidelity. Lots of lines reference Jay-Z cheating vaguely, including bars about dishonesty on your breath, you come home at 3 a.m. and lie to me, what are you hiding? I need to know, are you cheating on me? I regret the night I put that ring on, and ashes to ashes, dust to side chicks. And in the hour-long visual version of Lemonade, we see Beyonce transitioning through a variety of trippy dreamscapes, including a scene where she uses a baseball bat to take out her aggression of being cheated on, on a poor cameraman. Shit, she's like the female Tion Wayne. As the album progressed, the closing songs came across like a reconciliation, and this was evidenced by a pretty romantic appearance of Jay-Z in the visual album for Lemonade. And while the first half of the album was seemingly made up of non-stop Jay-Z spousal sneak disses, apparently this didn't bother the Jigger Man, and he said in a Rap Radar interview that he was actually present for a lot of the recording of Lemonade. It's difficult to like, you know, to go through, but the real shit was See so you swinging way, the bat in the video? That was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to watch that yeah. day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was there the whole time, you know what I'm saying? Like doing the tour, the, 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 the making of the album, the thing, it's like, it was therapeutic. And to be fair, it's not all just Jay-Z shade. The album does veer away from infidelity onto a lot of other interesting topics, including Beyonce's family history and her own personal identity as a strong, successful black woman. I really wasn't expecting to enjoy Lemonade, but I gotta say, that album went pretty hard. I mean, it's like Illmatic for people with vaginas. But a whole lot of media drama and focus swirled around one pretty, in my opinion, insignificant line. Beyonce saying, you only want me when I'm not there you should go call Becky with a good hair. Now, if you've been living under a rock or if you've simply just been listening to more rock than hip hop, you might not actually know what this means. Well, Becky is a slang phrase that has essentially been historically used throughout hip hop to refer to a kind of basic white chick in reference to the intro of the classic track, Baby Got Back by Sir Mixalot. So following the release of Lemonade and this famous line about Becky with the good hair, the media went into a frenzy trying to work out who this mythical Becky was, swiping through prospects faster than a newly single Chad on Tinder. The first and most obvious suspect was of course Rachel Roy, who had been flirting with Jay-Z at that event. And Rachel didn't really help things because after that lyric came out about Becky with the good hair, she actually posted an Instagram picture with the caption, good hair, don't care, which seemed to hint pretty heavily that it was her that was being discussed on this track. Bad move, Rach. 
bad move. The beehive came in in full effect, ambushing her Instagram with countless comments showing bee and lemon emojis. The softcore bullying was clearly more than Rachel Roy had bargained for, and she quickly deleted the post and made a tweet trying to distance herself from this backlash and then taking her Instagram private. God damn, clout is a hell of a drug. And to be fair, whilst the Rachel Roy angle seems like the most plausible suspect, other less realistic but more clickbaitable Beckys were suggested, including Rita Ora because of her ties to Jay-Z's label, and bizarrely Gwyneth Paltrow after Amber Rose decided to come up with that lie to get clout during a podcast. But then again, not too long after this, one of Beyonce's ghostwriters, Diana Gordon, came out in an interview trying to take control of the narrative and downplaying the Becky angle. She said that line wasn't all that significant and it was written not with anyone in particular in mind and the media had really just ran with it and blown things out of proportion. I kind of agree, but then again, we all knew that there would be at least one or multiple Beckys involved. So regardless of who wrote it or its significance, I think Rachel Roy's response on Instagram was probably the most credible piece of evidence that she was in fact the Becky being referred to. Other lyrics that Beyonce put out around the time were a little more lighthearted in reference to this clout generating incident. She said on the track, Flawless, of course some shit goes down when there's a billion dollars on an elevator. Oh, so that's how elevators work. Though to be fair, the handy geniuses over at Genius.com did actually explain in an annotation that a billion dollars in cash would in fact be so heavy that it probably would bring down most regulation elevators. Damn, I hope her ghostwriter got paid top dollar for that scientifically accurate bar. Interestingly, the Jigger Man had kept his mouth J-zipped ever since this incident. Pretty understandable considering the fact that he is kind of the bad guy in this whole scenario. And it would actually be several years on from that elevator beatdown that Jay would finally get his opportunity to cash in by talking about the situation. When it came time for Jay to drop his long-awaited 444 project, it was rumored that the album would include several references to the incident and his infidelity. Jay-Z answered a few questions while surrounded by an ungodly amount of food, like some kind of king of tapas, whilst appearing on the rap radar podcast. He said that this was the only disagreement that he's ever had with Solange and he does truly see her as his sister. So what happened in the elevator private yeah. moment, but how did that happen? Yeah, I mean, I mean uh, yeah, to. we've always had a great relationship. Right. You know what I mean? I fought, I fought my brothers and like argued with my brothers my whole life. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Just so happened to who we are, these things go into a different space, but right. it ain't nothing. We've never, we've had one uh, disagreement ever mm. before and after we've been cool. You know what I'm saying? It's like my sister. Mm -hmm. I will, I will protect her. I will, you know, it's right. my sister, not my my uh, sister-in-law, not my, you know, my sister. Right. Though knowing how Jay-Z treats his other siblings, she's lucky that he didn't come back with a Draco and put two in her shoulder. Anyway, when that 444 album dropped, Jay actually shed a surprising amount of light on the situation. He apologizes for various sins throughout his career on the track Kill Jay-Z, where the idea of the song is all about Jay-Z killing his ego and bringing up highly publicized past incidents where he's behaved badly. Apparently in the run-up to this big album release and the song Kill Jay-Z's concept of him killing his ego, Jay-Z actually dropped the hyphen from his name, going from J-Z to just Jay-Z. Jay-Z. Man, how much of an egotistical douche has Jay-Z been all these years having a hyphen in his name? In fact, I'm pretty sure that when my ego gets out of control once I hit a million subscribers, I'll get addicted to coke, get a harem of beautiful women, and change my name to trap hyphen law hyphen Ross hyphen hyphen baby. Please say the hyphen. Anyway, on that song, Jay-Z said that he eggs Solange on when he should have admitted he was wrong. He then goes on to say that he nearly went full Eric Benet in a reference to the R&B singer who was once married to Halle Berry, but lost her after it emerged he cheated. Funnily enough, Eric Benet heard this track and actually tweeted that he's still got the baddest girl in the world in reference to his new wife, Manuela Testolini, who interestingly is also Prince's ex-wife. But let's be honest, out of all of those, I think I would rather fuck Prince. But the Eric Benet line wasn't the only piece of shade that Jay-Z dropped on another musician. He also had another slick bar in that song that seemed to address everybody's favorite lean addict and rapper that's best enjoyed with the subtitles on, Future. His line, in the future other dudes playing football with his son, seemed to ruffle a few purple feathers. This was a reference to the Future's previous engagement to his baby mama, Ciara, that fell apart after it emerged that he'd been living a pretty wild lifestyle. I'm sorry, but I don't know how long it took for that to emerge. I mean, has Ciara ever heard one of Future's songs? Anywho, Ciara moved on from Future and ended up shacking up with NFL player Russell Westbrook, who rubbed salt into the wounds by being an amazing stepfather to Future's son. What a jerk. But then again, a lot of people have said that Wilson has gone a little too far on this stepfathering thing, including being seen in social media clips with Future's son calling him Papa and kissing the kid. I'm sorry, but in my opinion, the most questionable thing about this clip is the fact it took place in a goddamn men's bathroom. I mean, Russell Wilson needs to look out that Ciara doesn't leave him for Dr. Disrespect at this rate. But apparently, Jay-Z's attempt to shit on Future for clout in this hotline didn't go unnoticed and didn't take long for Future to pop up on the radio looking for all that smoke. 
when you hear a line like Jay Z say, you know, playing football in the future. Yeah, but then when Jay Z, but I talked to him, I, I didn't really say that. I don't, uh, man. We didn't. I didn't mean it like that. Like, ooh, 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 and I was just like. You're supposed to be bigging up the rap community. But it did seem that Jay-Z and Future were able to iron this out, and Jay did mention that he didn't mean any disrespect when he appeared on the Rap Radar podcast. People are saying yes, that you mentioned Future, and was yeah. that a play on words, or? Yeah, but yes. Yes, that's, okay. that's, 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 uh, that's fair. That's really fair. But I, I thought about that line, and I thought about hip hop. And I was like, I really don't mean any malice. What, what I mean by that is, the way his situation plays out, because he's such a public figure, my mind would have played out that way and maybe four times more. The Solange apology on Kill Jay-Z aside, there were a few other lines referencing his infidelity on that album. This included, Look, I apologize, often womanize, took for my child to be born to see through a woman's eyes. And he also said, Yeah, I'll fuck up a good thing if you let me. Let me alone, Becky. Of course, in reference to the rumored Becky from the Lemonade track. I feel like the fact that Jay-Z actually references a Becky is pretty telling. So in spite of whatever Beyonce's ghostwriter says, this to me is confirmation from Jay-Z himself that there was some kind of Becky or Beckys involved. He also goes on to reference a mystery menage, saying, if my children knew, I don't even know what I would do. If they ain't look at me the same, I will probably die with all the shame. You did what with who? What good is a menage a trois when you have a soulmate? You risk that for blue? So if you look carefully at what Jay-Z's saying, he basically cops to cheating without explicitly saying it. But Jay-Z went on to publicly acknowledge what everybody had been suspicious of, talking about his infidelity with David Letterman. Supposedly, Jay and Bay actually went to couples therapy to try and work through their problems, and they said that their joint album, The Carters, was a really great bonding experience for them to rebuild their relationship. They've also both stated numerous times that they felt their respective Lemonade and 444 projects had each given them a therapeutic catharsis to get over this incident. So, if we've learned anything from this story, it's that all it takes to save a failing marriage is a giant check from Netflix, a joint album, four years of public embarrassment, and a good old-fashioned kicking. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, make sure that you like and subscribe below. If you want to support the channel further, I would suggest you go over to www.traplaw.com where you can go and cop some Trap Law merch. I would really appreciate it. I've been designing the merch myself and I've been very pleased with it. Hope you enjoy that. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you've been enjoying my work. Thank you very much for your support. And until next time, peace out.